all the action once again coming to you inside the Trigon. The Trigon is the smallest surface in combat sports. The highest finish rate in all of combat sports. Welcome to BYB Extreme. Beautiful Tampa, Florida on a Thursday night and the Trigon is open for confrontation as we get set at the Florida State Fairgrounds for BYB 25, Brawl on the Bay. Two titles are on the line, our main event, Cub Hawkins and Ryan Jett. Hi again, everybody, I'm Mike Colbert. Welcome once again to BYB Extreme. I would say it is a frenetic pace in which our roster continues to grow exponentially. I'll take this one for example. How about the heavyweight title contender matchup, the title eliminator matchup tonight as we welcome the Cuban assassin to the Trigon. Gustavo Trujillo is 4-0 in bare knuckle competition. Four first round finishes in a total time of three minutes and 51 seconds. Tonight, he makes his BYB debut in this heavyweight title eliminator fight against Rio de Janeiro, Brazil's Levi Costa. Levi Costa moved to San Diego two years ago. He told me this opportunity feels well-deserved. I've worked my entire life at the highest level and I want the belt. So our co-main event victor will face our champion in the heavyweight division, Hurricane Ike Villanueva. Of course, I'm joined by my powerful partner, the former two-time world champion, the magic man, Pauli Malinaji. Main event is for the title in the light heavyweight division. Cub Hawkins, Ryan Jett. I think the fight started about 24 hours ago. Man, did it ever. First of all, I think the thing started even sooner. You know, I, I agree. In, in this generation where social media creates beefs, I wouldn't know anything about that. These guys are DMing each other and, and talking trash to each other. Not just these two. I mean, this is like the modern day way of creating fights nowadays. But nowadays, we got these two guys, Jett and Cub Hawkins. I kind of think these guys are very much alike in that they're calm outside the Trigon, but yet very engaging. But inside the Trigon, it's all war. Where they didn't wait for the Trigon, as you saw there, the slapper around the world. Ryan Jett gets the first shot off on Cub Hawkins. I think Hawkins was trying to do his best Lorenzo Hunt impression where he was going to go to the lane with the banana, maybe smashing in Jett's face. Jett, Jett kind of saw the, the wedding on the wall and said, you know what, let me get the slap off first. And he did indeed. And the second title on the line is for the BYB Women's Super Flyweight World Championship. It is Spitfire. Agnesa Kirikosian, born in Armenia, fighting out of Los Angeles. Her opponent is Shelby Boom Boom Cannon. The Trigon Gate will be open, coming up next. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Florida State Fairgrounds. Tonight's home for BYB Extreme, and it is tonight's home for BYB 25, the brawl on the bay with seven bare knuckle contests tonight, including two championship bouts inside the mighty Trigon. We begin our evening with five two minute rounds in the super featherweight division. Let's meet the fighters. First, fighting out of the blue corner, wearing the purple trunks with black trim. She stands five feet, eight inches tall. She weighed in at 131 pounds. She is a veteran of three bare knuckle bouts that she fights out of Albuquerque, New Mexico, by way of Tacoma, Washington. Introducing Randine, the queen of mean echo. And her opponent, Fighting out of the red corner, wearing the black trunks with red trim. She stands five feet, five inches tall. She weighed in at 127.3 pounds. Tonight, she makes her bare knuckle debut and she fights out of New York, New York. Ladies and gentlemen, Jacob, the hitmaker, Pavillas. Our referee in charge, Christopher Young. Christopher Young, our referee, first fight of the night. Pavilis and Ekholm. Yeah. Right yeah, right. 
Round one. Fight! Bell. Here we go! Randine Eckholm engages immediately. And the dirty boxing starts. Pavelis in the black trunks in the purple Randine Ekholm, who we have seen before, Paulie. Yeah, yeah, we've seen uh, we've seen Ekholm before. Uh, honestly, oh, good hook there by Pavelis. I've seen Pavelis at the New York Golden Gloves. She's, uh, she's got some good boxing skills, and she's showing them off right now at center ring, catching Ekholm with some good roundhouse shots from around the around the guard of uh, Ekholm. She won the 10th annual New York Boxing Tournament back in 2019. Nice uppercut connecting here. Yeah, she's got Ekholm cut already. Slipping sliding around the uh, the attempted attacks of, uh, of Ekholm. She was very confident when talking to her yesterday. All about business, but the same can be said for Ekholm, who just ate a jab. Yeah, Ekholm is more so trying to place those jabs out there instead of snapping them out. She's got the longer arms, and, and Pavlis is punching in between her, timing her shots very nicely. And now Ekholm is really leaking that blood. That uppercut from Jacobs working very well, partner. Yeah, it sure is. Yeah, I, tell, I tell you, the whole repertoire. Look at how she goes underneath the shot, slips the shot. She sees everything coming. She's much more calm. And there's, again, she's, she's timed that right hand as Ekholm tried to come with the right hand. And now she's cut on her forehead as well. Oof. That must have been a good knuckle shot, because there was no clash of heads. Usually, a clash of heads causes that kind of cover. That uppercut again, oh, Goldie. Again. That's the go-to. Yeah, and Pavlos is very, very calm. She sees everything. You can see the boxing pedigree really working for her here. There it is again. You see, she sees everything, even in tight spaces. She sees everything. And also, Ekholm's very hesitant because yes. she's worried about the counters. She's kind of aiming the shots instead of snapping them, and that's allowing Pavlos to see them. And again, with the counter uppercut. Big first round turned in by the hitmaker in her bare knuckle oh. debut. Ladies and gentlemen, we remind you, no flash photography, no shining your lights for fighter safety tonight, no flash photography, and please do not shine your flashlights on your phones. Thank you. And the damage on Ekholm is all over her face. Here's a, that right hand right there that probably opened that cut up over the top of the left eye of Ekholm. You see, uh, it was a good timing shot as Ekholm tried to reach out with the jab, but Ekholm also falls in on her front foot, and that's also why it makes it easier for Pavlos. Start of round number two. Pavilas was very relaxed and continues to be in her first round of bare knuckle boxing. You can see all that experience, Paulie, that you alluded to yeah. in, in New York, in Manhattan, in the Bronx, in Brooklyn, everywhere. And typically you can see the, 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 the stand-up fighting on a, on a professional boxer, a person with a boxing background is a little bit more calm as they're used to being in this position, standing up, trying to time their shots and, and pick their spots. And you can see that on Pavlos. Ekholm looking for the one one two. Pavilis is, I mean, she has brought great head movement and continues to work. And Pavilis took a little bit of a right hand a, yeah. few, a few seconds ago, and she's kind of blinking from the left eye. I don't think she got hit the whole first round, but now she finally took a shot here, and she's showing some sign of a little bit of marks on the top of her left eye. But you look at the right eye of, we're talking about the cut on, on the eye of Ekholm, but even the right eye of Ekholm, there's some swelling on the forehead and on top of the eye as well. Yeah. Again, the good slips at short range. You see Pavlos seeing everything. And again with the uppercut, she's looking for it. And there Ekholm could also lean on top of her. Remember, you're allowed to have that yes. dirty boxing in, uh, in, in the trigon, and, and Ekholm is now leaning on top of uh, Pavlos when Pavlos gets down low like that. And Randine is the taller fighter in this matchup by three inches. So tie her up, try to utilize some dirty boxing in the final 25 seconds of round number two. Again, good defensive instincts from Pavlos. Ekholm tough, man. I tell you, she's hanging in there. She's even trying to do her best to try to turn this thing around and give Pavlos something to worry about. Oh, 
another uppercut. She has got to be careful with those uppercuts from Pavlos. Pavlos has the almost like a, hon a honing device. for Jacob Avilas, and it has been a dominant performance for the 26-year-old fighting out of New York, New York, so far in this fight. Now, Ekholm has shown durability in her bare-knuckle debut against Britton Hart. She went the distance at BYB 15 in a very tough fight against Nadine Mandiao, but right now, she has really got to watch out for the uppercuts, Paulie. Yeah, the gonna... targets are being hit perfectly by Jacob. She's leaking all over the back of yeah. Jacob with that blood and that clinch. Some bad cuts there. And again, you see how she flies in, she steps in before she throws her punches, and that allows Pavlos to negate her, uh, Ekholm's reach advantage and height advantage, because Ekholm doesn't really know how to use it. She tries to step in, then punch, as opposed to use the punches to get her in. That is a good right hand from Ekholm Mellis. Down goes Ekholm for the first time here in round Four, three. Five, six, seven, eight, nine. Look at him. Look at him. It is all over! Jacob Abilis, victorious in her bare knuckle debut inside the mighty Trigon. Very impressive, very, very impressive. And you know what? Credit to the, the heart and toughness of Ekholm as well. She, she hangs in there. She's getting a reputation for having that toughness. She just has to work on some of those skills in the, inside the Trigon. It's not, not always a matter of will, but it's a matter of skill. And, and Jacob Pavel showed that tonight. What a, 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 a tremendous repertoire of skills she showed in this fight, defensively, offensively, also flowing her defense into her offense, and then counter, and, and uh, vice versa as well. Here's some of the replays there. Yeah, there was the hook that ended the fight with the knockdown over Pavlis, uh, by Pavlis over Ekholm. There it is again. And, and right a few seconds before, Ekholm had actually landed a decent right hand. Actually, that, that left hook was actually preceded by a good uppercut first by Pavlis, which is a punch that had been working for Pavlis the entire fight. The hit maker had the uppercut dialed in, and she is 1-0 here in BYB Extreme. Official decision coming up next. Definitely on showcase tonight, the amateur pedigree and professional boxing skills of the hitmaker to make this one official, Big Mo. Ladies and gentlemen, the referee Christopher Young calls a stop to this contest at 1 minute 19 seconds of round number three. Declare your winner by TKO, Jacob, the hitmaker. That young lady is going to be a force that needs to be dealt with in her division in super featherweight tonight. She weighed in at 127, and she wasn't kidding in our fighter interview. She's confident, and she knows how to box, adjusted beautifully to her first battle inside the Trigon. So the women get us started, and then later, there is a title on the line at 115 in the super flyweight division, our featured matchup here tonight at BYB Extreme 25, Brawl on the Bay, as one of these two great fighters will leave with the belt. 
Will it be Shelby Cannon? Shelby Boom Boom Cannon with a great opportunity to come in and capture BYB gold. She's 2-0 inside the Trigon and coming off a very heated battle back and forth with Cecilia Uyoya. And she ended up winning that, going the distance by unanimous decision. Showed her grit, showed her toughness, and proved to herself that she is ready to take the next step. Now, Paulie, that next step, though, is Agnesa Kirikosian, who's outstanding in her own right. Yeah, yeah, a little spitfire. She throws combinations with good speed. Uh, she has that boxing background, boxing footwork, as you can see here on this on this little clip here. Uh, she can she flip she can flip her stance and, and then throw hooks from both stances. Uh, again, solid, solid boxer with some good speed and good combinations. She had a little bit of trouble in her last fight too with uh, with the tall. I forgot uh, with Jessica Link. Yeah, yeah. Jessica Link. Yeah, yeah Jessica Link. Uh, we gave her a little bit of problems, but I think it's also because Agnesa uses that in and out style and for against a taller fighter that's difficult more difficult to pull off she had managed to get the win and she's here now but she won't have to deal with that in and out problems against the, the shelby cannon who's about her height yes indeed that will be for a title later tonight coming up next it is lucas jones and javier ramos this is byb extreme coming to you live from the florida state fairgrounds in tampa our tail of the tape for this welterweight matchup. Javier Ramos making his professional combat debut. 32 years old, four inches taller than Tampa, Florida's Lucas Jones. Born in Indiana, now fighting out of Tampa as they get set to battle for two-minute rounds because it is Ramos's professional combat debut. Here's Big Mo. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back inside the Florida State Fairgrounds for BYB Extreme 25. Our next contest is scheduled for four two-minute rounds in the welterweight division and is brought to you by Mike Bradner Law. Our referee in charge when the bell rings, Michael De Jesus. Let's meet the fighters. First, fighting out of the blue corner. Wearing the black trunks with gray trim. He stands five feet, five inches tall. He weighed in at 146 pounds. He is a veteran of one bare knuckle contest and he fights right here in Tampa, Florida. Ladies and gentlemen, Lucas Cloud Jones. And his opponent fighting out of the red corner. Wearing the black trunks with red trim, he stands five feet, nine inches tall. He weighed in at 140.8 pounds. He is making his bare knuckle debut tonight, and he fights out of Garner, North Carolina, by way of the Bronx, New York, introducing Javier Silencio Ramos. Set for the start of this fight between Ramos and Jones. Michael De Jesus, our referee. Here we go. They engage quickly. You told me go. Oh, hold on, man. A little bit of miscommunication with yep. the commission. We are underway. So here we go again, Bali. Jones in the black and gray. Ramos teeing off early in the black trunks. Dirty boxing 101 right here. Great work to the body, partner. No feel out rounds here, man. They're, they're going right at it. And of course, that's a, also, you know, the, the early fight jitters of a guy in his debut against a guy who's got one professional fight. Both of these guys kind of novice here. So that, that nervous energy translates into quick action. Ramos teeing off early, and then Jones got a couple of shots in from the clinch and again goes for it here. Nice uppercut. Yeah, and Jones trying to create space for that uppercut. Right now, Ramos is smothering back it up, back it up. Jones a lot. Looking for that break, man. Two minute rounds, four of them under the new unified rules from the ABC with a professional combat debut made by the man in the black trunks in the red corner, Javier Ramos. But man, they, they don't need three right now at this pace, Paulie. Yeah, yeah. Not a lot is landing, though. You see, I feel like they're burning a lot of energy. 
fatiguing themselves more so. Uh, I think Ramos is burning more of the energy. Jones is kind of calm, but not doing a lot there. Jones tries to jump in with a shot. <laughs> Jones saying his hair is getting pulled by Ramos on the inside. It's one of those risks of uh, having that long hair. Not only can he get in your face, but with bare hands, guy can pull it too. Over the top, Ramos. And Jones over the top underneath. Now we're going to get dirty boxing. The knockdown scored by Jones. It is all over. Just like that. Lucas Jones finishes Javier Ramos. Oh, yeah, I'll be telling you, Ramos just tells, does a sign with his hand, like, nah, I'm done. Yeah. And yeah, that's always interesting in the, the debut of a guy, especially in this sport, the debut of a guy. And this is his combat sports debut, so right. it's a bit more difficult to debut in all combat in a bare knuckle fight. And you can see, you get a taste of it. Sometimes you get these kind of reactions, and that's what you saw from Ramos. As soon as he started getting hit, he was done. Yep. And Ramos came out fast, but Jones handled it yeah. perfectly. Yeah, and that was the nervous energy, really. And the dirty box in there is Jones, you see, the has the tie plum in there a couple little uppercuts and Ramos that was all Ramos needed to taste to say you know what I don't need this in my life and sure enough he took the full count and that's all I guess it's always interesting to me the debut of guys because you know look at this look at this what's going on over here Jones wants to Jones, Jones in the ring trying to Get the get the stool. You guys missed it. You guys saw the replay. Yep. Jones picked up the stool and he's gonna throw it at Ramos. <laughs> I don't know what that was about. All I know is that Jones in his backyard, victorious with a quick finish of Javier Ramos, born in Indiana but fighting here in Tampa, Florida, and he lives right here in Tampa, Florida. And the official decision for Jones's victory when we come back. Lucas Jones has said his whole life is built up to this. He is a fighter by nature. He is the victor tonight. To make it official, here is Big Mo. Ladies and gentlemen, referee Michael DeJesus calls a stop to this contest at 1 minute 54 seconds of the very first round, declaring your winner by knockout, Lucas Clown Jones. Victorious. In his first trip to the mighty Trigon, Lucas Jones came in very excited to fight here in Tampa. A shout out to Senpai Javier. Lucas told us he lost his father at a young age and Senpai Javier and the sport of karate really helped him as a youth. And now he comes in and finishes Ramos does, in the very first round. Paulie. Does the job, does the job, and then that, that's a great confidence builder for him. And like you talked about, you know, uh, lost his father early, uh, you know, had to have this trainer that uh, sort of became a father figure yep. for him. And combat sports in general sometimes does that, you know, father, for people that are young, young men that are, have lost their way, young people that have lost their way, brings you back on the right, on the yes, right track. It definitely does. Our main event later tonight, Cub Hawkins and Ryan Jett here in Tampa, and our next stop is a mile high. BYP's biggest bare knuckle stars return to Denver, Colorado on Friday, May 10th for BYB 26. Mile High Brawl, newly crowned super middleweight champion, LT Smash Nelson looks to become BYB's first two division title holder when he takes on his toughest opponent yet in the ever dangerous and always hungry Tommy the Samurai Turner for the BYB middleweight belt. There will be no love lost when big time brawlers Julie Diaz and Zion Tomlinson look to draw first blood as they meet in the Trigon in a cruiserweight title eliminator match. Plus, BYB lightweight champion Patty Juarez gets back in action in front of her hometown crowd while Robert Duran Jr. makes his long awaited BYB debut. Catch all the action live at the Stockyards Event Center Friday, May 10th. Visit BYBExtreme.com for tickets and information. Our tail of the tape for our next fight in the welterweight division. Harry Gigliotti's back, 28 years old, six years younger than his opponent, Rusty Crowder. He will have a four-inch reach advantage. This fight scheduled for five three-minute rounds. 
with the official introductions. Once again, here's Big Mo. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back inside the mighty Trigon, the smallest surface in combat sports here in Tampa, Florida. Our next contest is scheduled for five three-minute rounds in the welterweight division and is brought to you by GC3. Our referee in charge with the bell rings, Wayne Spinola. Let's meet the fighters. First, fighting out of the blue corner. Wearing the blue trunks with white trim, he stands five feet, nine inches tall. He weighed in at 144.7 pounds. He holds a bare knuckle record of four victories versus four defeats, and he fights out of Miller Rickon, Georgia. Please welcome Rowdy Rusty Crowder. And his opponent, fighting out of the red corner, wearing the black trunks with gold trim. He stands five feet, 10 inches tall. He weighed in at 144 and one half pounds. He holds an undefeated bare knuckle record of one win versus no defeats. And he fights out of Haver Hill, Massachusetts. Introducing Harry the Hitman, GVT. Hey. Imitation is the greatest form of flattery. Rusty Crowder did the magic man. It wasn't bad, right? No, yeah. <laughs> it's better than when I tried it. And you know what? You mean Rowdy as well. Miranda. There you go. There you go. These two are ready to fight. Crowder right, and Jigliotti. All right. These guys are. Wait for me. Ready? Doing all the all the show before, but I think they kind of like each other. You know what I mean? Yeah, exactly. Oh, big shot there from Gigliotti. Gigliotti, outstanding boxer. He is in the black and gold. In fact, he is repping his Boston Bruins. Rusty Crowder in the blue and white trunks with Joe Elmore in his corner. Stop right here. Stop right here. Stop Crowder's going to be looking to get inside there. The longer reach of Gigliotti is he's going to Gigliotti's going to Gigliotti's going to try to use that those straight punches as he just did a few seconds ago when he landed that right hand. Crowder's gonna have to work his way in there and try to use that dirty boxing. Crowder, four victories in bare knuckle. He has finished three of those four wins. Four setbacks, but he has never been stopped. Jigliotti looking to move to 2-0. Oh, big swing and a miss by Rowdy Rusty. He's gonna have to negotiate that distance as you see Gigliotti using those long arms. Try to prevent them, and a good counter over the top by Giuliani, a little check left hook. First fight in a year and a half for Rowdy Rusty Crowder. Giuliani made his debut in Denver back in December, and this one starting to become a good battle early. Yeah, Giuliani got caught going straight back there with a couple of shots from Crowder, so Crowder got a little bit of confidence, confidence to build on after this little start. And when I say Bruins colors, Paulie, he is a diehard Bruins fan. And uh, you no and, com, you, no and Harry, yeah, you and Harry might have a conversation. Yeah. If it comes months. to the conference finals, the you'll, you'll take it, right? Yeah, in the coming months. Yep. Your Rangers and his Bruins. Both teams are hot, though. Yes, indeed. Both over 100 points on the season already. Round number one. Oh, good body combination there from Giuliani. And a good comeback by Crowder. Crowder with a good left hook there, too. The difference here is Crowder's throwing one shot at a time. Giuliani's trying to throw in combinations. So Crowder's going to have to make that adjustment, either take away the combination ability of Giuliani, or if he starts to throw in combination himself. You see some blood trickling down the left eye of Crowder. Giuliani has a very vast amateur and professional boxing pedigree. We saw it showcased in Denver against Cody Jenkins. Yeah, you see him playing on that back yep. foot. He's trying to use that jab and trying to come over the top of left hook counters. Oh, nasty oh, body shot yeah. there. He snuck that one in. Yeah, <laughs> knuckles, day, knuckles in. And again, there's that jab again. That's going to be something the crowd is going to have to learn to negotiate. Giuliani's controlling that distance with that jab, and that cut's not going to do any favors with that jab of Giuliani. Could counter right by Giuliani as well, Holding. A good hook on the out as well for Giuliani. He said the smart man wins the fight. It's chestnut checkers and the hitman with a couple of hits that landed here in round one.
Yeah, I'm just breaking them down. Yeah, yeah, just put up yeah, Round number two, Jigliotti, black, yellow, white trim, Boston Bruins being represented by Haverhill, Massachusetts hitman, Rusty Crowder, fighting out of Temple, Georgia in the blue and white. Coming forward. Crowder landed that last shot there, but yep. That's says Giuliani's got to be careful going straight back. And that might be Crowder's best opportunity, just to rush Giuliani. Just he's got to be careful not, not uh, smothering himself. It's a good over-the-top left hook there by Giuliani again. Giuliani, you mentioned Goldie had said his chest, not checkers, and he's kind of had that approach. Yes. While Crowder has not been able to really negotiate the, the technical ability of, of Giuliani so far. Giuliani won a welterweight title in 2021 in New England. A novice title in New England, Golden Gloves runner-up in his amateur competition. Nine wins with the gloves on as a professional. Looking to move to 2-0 in bare knuckle. Crowder looking to win in his debut. And you see Crowder just trying to figure it out there. You know, he's trying to come over the top with that big right hand. And that's one thing. Crowder said it's his favorite punch. Yep. And it's also something Giuliani said is the main, mainly the, the big main weapon that uh, Giuliani, uh, that uh, Crowder has. Good hook by Giuliani. So Crowder's going to have to show a bit of a repertoire here. As, ever, as both guys kind of know that's what he's looking for. As, as Giuliani goes back to controlling with that lead hand, with that educated left hand. Crowder loves that big overhand right. He said he wants to make it a dogfight. Accidental poke. Wayne Spinola will... I won't tell you what, what uh, Giuliani thought of that. Yeah. Poke, eye poke he just got. But he said it over, over the top of me. We could probably figure it out. Yeah. yeah. I, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking he probably thinks that Crowder did it on purpose. I think Crowder was probably just trying to parry a little bit. See right there? There it is, yeah. Stuck his hand out and got, got Giuliani right in the eye. Sometimes that happens. I mean, I don't remember in professional boxing, you know, you mainly stay with your hands open right. until you're punching. So, you know, you use that defensively to try to parry and grab the other hand and whatnot. So, and without gloves, I imagine it's a little bit tricky. And with the MMA gloves, it happens, it happens unfortunately too. as well. Right. Yeah, that's a, kind of a tough eye poke, too. Yeah. The doctor will take a look at it. Harry's brother Doug in his corner again tonight. Gigliotti's ready to go. He was a goaltender growing up. His brother, a defenseman. The action continues. 30 seconds into round two. Black and gold for Gigliotti. Blue and white for Crowder. And is Gigliotti the one with the brother who does the ground fighting too? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yep. He said, I can beat him standing up, but I do not want to wrestle him. It's like me and my brother. <laughs> there you go. And who was the goaltender? Gigliotti or his yeah, brother? Harry was the goalie and Doug was the defenseman. And they both say they'll take Bobby Orr gonna... first and now Milan Lucic. You know what? So Giuliani needs his eyes. I mean, he's playing goaltender. Right. Yeah, I don't want to get those eyes poked. He doesn't have the Jerry Cheever's mask with all the with all the stitch marks on it, right? I know. We're going way too much hockey. Way too over. much. Yeah. Back to the fight. Back to 72. Crowder circling around the trigon, but again, I, I just trying to figure out the technique Crowder is going to try to use here. See, you can see Giuliani sort of has a game plan. Work behind that educated left hand. Use that jab. Change heights. Crowder and now Giuliani both talking, but. They both, it's just Crowder, it doesn't seem to have, I guess the game plan, he's trying to figure it out. A little cheap shot there by Giuliani on the break. I think Giuliani's still angry about that eye poke. Yep. I mean, the introductions were heated. <laughs> yeah, it's true. So a warning given to Harry Gigliotti, and round two continues. Crowder switching that stance. You see, Gigliotti does something very smooth, too. He changes heights yes. at key moments, and it makes Crowder stop and, and have to reassess.
Fourth generation of boxing in the family of the Gigliottis, including the father, Stephen is 65, grandfather, 92 years old, watching Harry Gigliotti look to go to 2-0 inside the Trigon, black and gold, Crowder looking to earn a victory in his BYB debut. I did mention earlier that Crowder, even though he has been defeated four times, has never been stopped. Yeah, you can see why. Up for competition. You can see why. He's tough. He's yep. tough, but he's also circling his way around the Trigon and not really trying to figure out how to create an attack. And you can see Giada getting impatient. He's trying to showboat back to him and now trying to trying to keep him on against the Trigon. And there's that blitz again that you talked about earlier from Rusty Crowder. That check hook. Jigliotti's just missed with it a couple times. Yeah, but the, the thing that's bothered Crowder and been the difference in this fight has been the jab of, yeah. of Jigliotti. You know, uh, Crowder has not been able to match it. You know, they tell you you can jab with a jab, but you don't hook with a hooker, but Crowder has shown almost a non-existent jab. And that, when you're not jabbing at a guy who can jab at you and knows how to jab at you, it makes it very, very difficult to not only close the distance, but also set up your own offense because that jab is sort of disrupting you as well. Haverhill, Massachusetts, 35 miles north of Boston on the New Hampshire border. A lot of proud fighters. And I remember in his debut, Pauly, he talked about coming up the Mickey Ward path. Yeah, no easy fights for Harry Gigliotti. Yeah, I mean, taking the BYB route is not an easy path in itself. You got you know? that right. Fight scheduled for five. This is round three. Oh, there's that jab again. Mike Goldberg, the magic man, the former two-time world champion, my powerful partner, Paulie Molinaggi. Great to be here in Tampa, Florida. And, and, and Crowder, it's tough, man. I mean, he's, again, it's one of those situations where you're tough and you have the will, but you just, it, again, it's a matter of skill, too, not just will. You can see Crowder has the will. He's trying to hang in there, but he just cannot deal with the skill set that Giuliani's bringing to the table. He tries, though. You see, he throws up every once in a while. He shows him he's there. Crowder's wins. Oh, good body shot there. At least the three finishes probably came earlier on his resume as a bare knuckle boxer. He just needs to solve the superior jab and boxing skills showcased right now by Gigliotti. Yeah, yeah. And again, it would start with jabbing yourself, you know, uh, coming back with your own jab. But instead, he's trying to get close enough to try to throw these big shots, and all he's taking is jabs, and now he's trying to wipe away the blood out of his eye. Also, Giuliani does something really sneaky as well. He, every once in a while, he mixes in a, a nice left hook uh, off that jab, so you can't really get a timing on it. There it is again. Controls that left hook. Well, head towards round four. Check into the corners of Giuliani and Crowder. Joe Elmore in the corner of Rusty Crowder. Jigliotti coming up in weight for this fight, coming up to 145. Boxing, he had one at 135, four at 149 at 145. This one, the highest of the two in bare knuckle. He said cut wasn't a problem because I didn't really have to make one. What he wants to do is punish Rusty Crowder and finish this fight here in round number four. Jigliotti representing, as we said, the Boston Bruins, black, yellow, and white. Blue and white for Rusty Crowder fighting out of Temple, Georgia. Nice jab, sharp early again in this round, Paul. Yeah, sharp.
You see what Crowder does. He tries to kind of paw with that lead hand and then try to throw something big. But again, that's, that's not really disguising anything. You see there, he snapped out a jab and he landed it. See, that's really more what he should try to be trying to work on. He's getting that snap on that left hand so he can disrupt a little bit of the, of the jabbing of, of Giuliani. Crowder is a fourth stripe brown belt in Brazilian jiu-jitsu and has 15 professional MMA bouts. But we haven't seen him try to clinch or work any dirty boxing. Yeah, there is a clinch there again. Oh, right it's, it's, yeah. it's a little bit difficult, though, in, 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 the, in the trigon. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. Yeah. There. From Giuliani. You see the swelling all over the face and cuts of uh, Crowder. And again, you can kind of see why he's never been stopped, Goldie. Yeah, tough. That's a tough dude. So you want to be a bare-knuckle boxer. <laughs> He's trying to circle around, trying to find an angle, trying to figure out how he's going to close that gap. But Giuliani, very, very intelligent in the way he's been handling distance. Calculated. Short work against Cody Jenkins, but you could see the sharpness and the skill set of Gigliotti, and he's had more time to display it here tonight. Rusty Crowder's got a feel, though, Paul. He's one big overhand right from everything changing. And again, confrontation. I don't know what that, oh, that was oh, shoulder there. Yeah, I think he's, I think Giuliani's getting frustrated with not being able to track down Crowder the way he wants to. His Crowder moves a lot. And so when he gets on, he's finally on the inside, he's holding, holding on. I think he just got aggravated at Crowder holding on. To the body, very bladed in his stance. Mm -hmm. He's a jab too. Is that an overhand right again? Goldie Crowder tried and missed it. And he has not been able to find the trajectory on it. But Giuliani told us yesterday. I mean, he's basically said Crowder's only got an overhand right. Right. So right. I just got to watch for it. And pretty much, Crowder hasn't added anything to it because tonight that's pretty much what he's been looking for. Only the overhand right. So Crowder's got to add a little bit to that repertoire. He's gonna have success in the future. He cuts out of the bag with what he does look for and what he does well. What he does well. Fight scheduled for five three-minute rounds, nearing the end of round four. And the irony is uh, when we asked Crowder what he's going to do, he basically said his best punch is the overhand right, too. Yeah. They are not big fans of each other. <laughs> The shoulder shrug. Yeah. Bam. That was it right there. Oof. That was a little, a little bit of a Conor McGregor. I was thinking the same thing. Uh, Donald Cerrone. Donald Cerrone. Yep. Yeah. I've had that uh, done to me in sparring in boxing. Yeah. <laughs> it's an old boxing trick. <laughs> Was it in Ireland? <laughs> Sorry. No, Sorry. No, no, actually not. <laughs> but we did spot in Vegas, though, but we went to Okay, there you go. But yeah, no, the old, the old Gleason's gym, man. I mean, you, you get all the tricks from all those guys there. Yeah. First time that happened to me was probably the 90s. <laughs> in the gym. I was like, whoa, what are we doing here? Yeah. Wait a second. Fifth and final round, you, you saw the damage on the face of rowdy, rusty Crowder. Three minutes remain. Gigliotti trying to become the first man to stop Rusty Crowder. Crowder wants to throw one big punch, land it, and walk away with a victory here in the fifth and final round. Yeah, Crowder's not really, I mean, you know, listen, he moves a lot because he, he really hasn't figured out the technical aspects of the fight. And Giuliani's kind of, you know, he kind of gets aggravated about that. But there's no, really, not really quitting Crowder, you know. But you can tell he has the mechanisms to know how to go the distance. Trying to move around here, he'll probably look for an overhand right at some point. Not he's... surprisingly, Irish Mickey Ward from Ole Mass, the one of the great influences on Harry Gigliotti. Oh, good jab there as well. And I tell you, I hate to see Crowder's face tomorrow, man. Yeah. The swelling after the day after a fight is always more. Mouthpiece comes out, they put it back in. Rush, I forget, I said, forget washing the mouthpiece. Oh, 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 shot. I think Giuliani wants to put hands on Crowder and he can't really track him down because Crowder keeps moving. Two minutes remain in this fight. Okay. 
that jab still, basically, it's, it's, done, it's been the story of the fight. You see Giuliani's face is almost untouched because the jab has controlled the offensive output of Crowder. Good hook there, the trade hooks there. Offensive output of Crowder, and it has also damaged, done a lot of damage to the face of Crowder. And they were almost hooking with a hooker there, Paul. Yeah. Yeah. Came close. Yeah. Happens once in a while, right? <laughs> yeah, but I don't even know really who's the hooker here. You know, see, we know Giuliani's a, a jabber, but you know, sometimes if nobody's the hooker, man, you just hook with him, you know? Yep. And at this point, I don't think Crowder has anything to lose. No, he's, uh, one would think scorecards are weird, but yeah, I'm pretty, pretty confident that if Rusty Crowder doesn't finish his fight in the next 70 seconds, Terry Gigliotti's going to move to 2 0. Yeah, I mean, and there's a little backhand right hand from, from Crowder. I think he's going to get a warning for the backhand. <laughs> I think it's gonna cost him. But Giuliani's gotta be careful. He's way ahead in the fight. I think he's getting too amped up. That's an easy point to take away, and then the ref is kind of right to do that. I mean, listen. The action is stopped. There's no reason to hit while the referee's trying to explain things to you. He was giving Crowder a warning anyway, if I pray, within what I think was a backhand. Coming in, swinging away with reckless abandon. Oh, big right hand there from Giuliani. Off of the shoulder feint, too. You see, he made that fake roll, half a shoulder roll. And instead of rolling, he came back around and shot, shot a good right hand. And then Crowder showing that good chin. It started during the introductions. They were eyeing each other, pushing a little bit. It's been nasty, but it has been entertaining to say the least, final 30 seconds. I'm not gonna hold my breath, but I'd love for these guys to get along after the fight. Yeah, you know, I, I was thinking the same thing. You know what? Still, they still went the distance with each other. A little hit on the break there from Crowder, so that's gonna aggravate Giuliani more. Everybody's saying Dirty Harry. <laughs> Elmore's saying, don't talk yeah. to me. You see in the corner? Because yeah. oh, they were looking at each other with Elmore. Elmore says, I don't know you don't want it with me. <laughs> to Giuliani. 15 seconds remain. Oh. They go the distance. I like the embrace. Weren't sure if we were going to see it. Magic Man, when we were in commercial break, there was sportsmanship a lot. and a lot of it, and it was good to see between Jigliotti and Crowder with the official decision. Big ball. Ladies and gentlemen, after five full rounds, we go to the judges' scorecards for the official decision. All three judges see the contest 49 to 45, declaring your winner by unanimous decision. And still undefeated, Harry the Hitman. So a sweep minus the point deducted <laughs> for Gigliotti, right? Did I beat you to it? Harry <laughs> Gigliotti. Now you move to 2-0, still undefeated in the mighty Triga. For the fans that are watching right now on TV, they're learning a lot about your history, and you come with a great boxing pedigree. And you showed it tonight by establishing that jab the whole fight. Did you know that you would be able to control the distance and control the pace with that jab? Well, first and foremost, I want to say thank you for my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Um, the man above. I want to say uh, thank you for uh, uh, Rusty Crowder for being a gentleman. I know things get a little hectic in there, and it uh, sometimes uh, you know gets a little shitty. But um, he's a hell of a warrior and a hell of a comp uh, opponent. And at the end of the day, you know we both get to go home healthy. Um, but yeah, as soon as I started getting off my jab and kind of creating that space and that distance, and I knew that that overhand was just going to be there, you know, most of the night. Um, I, I, I knew that the jab was just going to be, you know, consistent, and I just kept pumping it and placing it right and beating him up. 
I gotta say, my hand's pretty busted up though. It hurt. And I, I had to start using my right hand at times I didn't really want to. Um, but once I created that pace and created that distance and you know controlled the center of the ring, uh, it wasn't much of a problem. I know you have a lot of friends and family that are watching in the Northeast and all over the country. Anything that you have to say to them? Yeah, I want to say thank you to my coach, Nick Peralta, who stepped up uh, from Lawtown Boxing Gym. My big brother, my uh, nutritionist, uh, Joseph Swenson, and my main man that's fighting for the world title, uh, May 10th, the Samurai, uh, Tommy Turner. Okay. Um, everybody at Lawtown Boxing Gym, uh, Jesse Fabian, my strength and conditioning coach, the, uh, Fernando Colazzo and the Candelarios, and uh, my main guy, Valentino Mercado, the, uh, the New England, uh, the New England champion, Silver, Silver Mitten champion, who's gonna be stepping up tomorrow for his uh, second amateur fight. And, um, you know, my mom and dad, everybody that, you know, stays uh, consistent with keeping up with my career, my grandfather, who just turned 92, um, all my loved ones, man, everybody I love. I'm sure they're very proud of you. Ladies and gentlemen, one more time in your rear, the Hitman, Harry Gigliotti. He thanked everyone and also teased our next fight. There he is, the samurai, Tommy Turner. He'll be in the main event in Denver against Smash for the belt. Our tale of the tape for our next fight in the super middleweight division. 39-year-old Martin Liam Down Brown fighting out of Tampa, Florida. He is the elder statesman against Will Chope, but Will Chope is much taller and will have a definitive reach advantage. It's his first fight back in the United States since 2021 for the young man who went to high school in Jacksonville, Florida. Big Mo with the introductions. Ladies and gentlemen, live from Tampa, Florida, this is BYB 25, the brawl on the bay. We continue with five three-minute rounds in the super middleweight division. Brought to you by Blue Streak Telecommunications. Our referee in charge with the bell rings, Michael DeJesus. Let's meet the fighters. First, fighting out of the blue corner. We're in the black, red, and blue trunks. He stands six feet, four inches tall. He weighed in at 162.8 pounds. He holds a bare knuckle record of three victories versus six defeats, and he fights out of Bangkok, Thailand, by way of Orange Park, Florida. Ladies and gentlemen, Will the Kill Choke. And his opponent, fighting out of the red corner. Wearing the black trunks with silver trim, he stands five feet, 11 inches tall. He weighs 163 pounds. He holds a bare knuckle record of three victories versus two defeats, and he fights Michael De Jesus, our referee. Here we go. Will Chope tonight, his 141st professional combat competition. He is in the red and blue trunks, black trunks for Tampa, Florida's own Martin Brown. Every form of fighting in every fashion of fighting will choke. Will choke and smash. Laurenti Nelson have a lot in common. Yeah, they fight in everything. They, they fight in everything and they fight a lot. That was a quick hook. Was that a hook or an elbow? That was a nice shot on the inside. It was. Choke takes the eight and the fight continues. Choke trying, having trouble trying to create that space, but he's too close. He's kind of smothering himself. And Brown doing a good job of finding those, those spaces on the inside. As he's better off on the inside. And it was a good body shot by Brown. And Choke goes down again. Brown truly trying to lay him down early. And it is all over just like that. Martin Brown victorious here at home. Nice body shot on the inside. 
Yep. By Brown. Still curious about that first knockdown. That was a sharp hook. I mean, I was on the other side of it. It almost looked like an elbow to me. Yeah. <laughs> well, we'll check it out on the replay for sure, Magic Man. But it was the body shot that ended the night quickly for Will Choke. That is Will's wife. Tia Rata in the corner tonight. For the third time, unfortunately, her husband defeated here in the first by Martin Brown, who is victorious in his yeah. BYB debut. And good win for him. Local, big local crowd came out yep. to support him. We will make it official. And don't forget, two titles and a title eliminator still to come here at BYB Extreme. Beautiful medallions presented to the fighters tonight from the man who runs the Bare Knuckle Boxing Hall of Fame in Belfast, New York, Scott Burt. Martin Brown said, I hit hard. He did tonight to make it official. Here's Big Mo. Ladies and gentlemen, referee Michael DeJesus calls it a stop to this contest at 1 minute 14 seconds of the very first round, declaring a winner by Knockout Martin. Martin Brown. Hold on one second. Do we have any Martin Brown fans here tonight? I wasn't sure. I, I think you sold a few tickets. Martin, quick night at the office for you. How did it feel being inside the Trigon? Oh, man, it was, I don't know, man. I just get started and I let the hands go, man. It's like, you heard the cry. It's easy work. And I don't mean no disrespect to, to, to Will Choke, but I trained for this, so. Well, you talked about letting those hands go. I actually want to turn you around and let's watch this screen here. We're going to look at some of the hooks that you landed inside the clinch. Now, this is BYB's rule set. You can dirty box inside the clinch. Let's see if we can get to the shot that you got him in the rib. You said you first got the knockdown. You stuck that in as you were clinching. Do you like hitting inside the clinch like that? Man, I like hitting everybody everywhere except the bottom of the And then there was that body shot. Sounds like you broke, their rib, broke his rib there. Did you know that you would have to dirty box with him? I, I kind of had an idea, but I, I trained for this. Like I, I learned, I work with elite coaches. You know, I don't know if y'all know that. Yeah, but that's Tony Aguilar. Let me know he got a big fight coming up. I trained out there at, at Flowers Boxing Academy, so I got like an ass shift in the lane. You know who Dave Mundell is and Jerry. I got, I just got killers around me at all times. There's no style of fighting that I don't know how to deal with. Well, when you came out to GZ, I know you meant business, but it sounds like, you know, you have friends and family that are watching you all over, big support staff, great coaching staff behind you. Anything that you have to say to them? Hey, just listen to the crowd when I say, Oh! <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, one more time for your winner, Martin Lamb Down Brown. First round knockout. First the hook to the head, then the shot to the body, and it was all over just like that. Martin Brown wins right here in his backyard, the Florida State Fairgrounds in Tampa, Florida. Coming up next, it is the battle for the super flyweight belt. Shelby Boom Boom Cannon, the southpaw says she loves to fight with that flow, and she has gotten better and more comfortable each trip into the Trigon. Agnesa Kirikosi and Spitfire also 2-0 inside the Trigon. Shelby Cannon, Agnesa Kirikosi for the super flyweight title here in BYB. That title fight coming up next. I'm Agnesa Spitfire Kirikosian fighting out of Los Angeles, California. There it is, right there. I'm expecting the best version of Shelby, and I hope she brings it because I want an epic fight, I want an epic knockout, and an epic win. <laughs> Ever since I got into bare knuckle, I wanted that belt. This is why I signed up, so either way, I'm taking that belt. For no one from nowhere, Indiana, I got to be a world champ. Slip. 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 Yeah. 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 
looking to make it a scrap. It's Bones Nessa! Shelby Cannon! It's not really about the belt, it's about the win, and that's just the perks of it. The belt comes home with me. We're all wed by TKO. We're gonna knock her down. She's not gonna get back up. She said she's gonna go boom, boom and take out Spitfire, Shelby Cannon, Agnesa Kirikosian for the super flyweight belt. The title is on the line. Both women unbeaten in their bare knuckle battles inside the Trigon. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm joined in the ring by BY Extremes matchmaker Mel Valenzuela and the innovator creator of the Mighty Trigon, Mr. Donna 5000, for our first championship bout of the evening. Six two minute rounds for BYB's Super Flyweight Championship of the World. Introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner, please welcome the Trigon, Shelby Shelby Cannon, 33 years old, born in San Diego, but raised in the Hoosier State of Indiana. She said, I'm from nowhere in Indiana. She is from Anderson, Indiana, 45 miles from Indianapolis. That's where Ray Colbert, if you guys know your college basketball, is from. National championship in 1981 with the Indiana Hoosiers. Isaiah Thomas, Landon Turner, Randy Whitman, Ted Kitchell. Tonight it is Cannon who wants to bring home her form of a national championship. Oh yeah, and she's ready to do it. I mean, this is a, a, a real well-anticipated matchup, solid clash of styles between two exciting fighters. She likes to work in and out. The left hand, she's gonna utilize her speed, and she told us she has been working diligently on her footwork. She had quite a fight against Cecilia Ulloa in Denver that went the distance. Both women coming off fights that truly have shown them and prepared them for a battle tonight for the Super Flyweight World Championship. She is Shelby Boom Boom Cannon. And her opponent fighting out of the right corner. Please welcome Agnesa Kira Kozin. Started boxing at age 23 at the Glendale Boxing Club when she was in college. The fight that she had against Jessica Link was the fight of the night back at BYB 21. It was what Agnesa said, a war that she did not see coming. No disrespect to Jessica, but man, it was a back and forth battle, but she said mentally it helps her tonight, Paulie. Yeah, yeah, I mean, Jessica brought a, a height to that weight class that yeah. was uh, unprecedented. I don't think uh, any fighter in this weight class would really expect to deal with that kind of thing. I mean, I, I think Link had come down and wait for that fight as she well. She did. And uh, really gave a lot of problems stylistically, but uh, Agnesa was able to, you know, overcome it in a very, very competitive fight. She said it took two months for her hands to heal. Her hands are ready, and she wants to let them go tonight. Our tail of the tape for this title matchup. Agnesa Kirikosian and Shelby Cannon both are 33 years old. When you look at that tail of the tape, I can go right to it, Polly. Everything else is virtually <laughs> identical. You said it, Goldie. Yeah, yeah, you know, in this case, it really doesn't matter. It, it really does. Maybe not even virtually. Here is Big Mo with the introduction. Ladies and gentlemen, this battle is scheduled for six two-minute rounds, and it is for BYB Super Flyweight Championship of the World. 
brought to you by Master Sound Productions. Let's meet the fighters. First, fighting out of the blue corner. Wearing the black trunks with pink trim, she stands five feet, one inch tall. She weighed in at 114 and one half pounds. She holds an undefeated bare knuckle record of two victories versus no defeats. And she fights out of Anderson, Indiana. Introducing Shelby Boom Boom Cannon. And her opponent fighting out of the red corner. Wearing the red trunks with gold trim, she stands five feet, two inches tall. She weighed in at 114.8 pounds. She holds an undefeated bare knuckle record of two victories versus no defeats. And she fights out of Los Angeles, California, introducing Agnesa Spitfire. for this championship bout is Mr. Christopher Young. Red corner, blue corner. All right, ladies, more time here. We'll fight hard, fight clean, touch him up. Fight scheduled for six two-minute rounds. Cannon and Kirikosian for the belt. Tail. Here we go! Pink trunks for the Southpaw, Shelby Cannon. White with the red and blue, and a little bit of gold as well for Agnesa Kirikosian circling around, showing off a switch stance early, and Shelby closes stop, the gap. Stop, 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 stop. Yeah, it seemed like uh, Shelby waited for Kirikosian to stop circling, and then fire straight in. See, and there's uh, Kirikosian. As you can see, Kirikosian a lot of times likes to over step in, change stances in that step, and then use that right hook on the way in. Shelby Cannon, a lot of clinch work, a lot of dirty boxing here early. It's an NFL style tackle. That is, that is indeed. That, that might be banned next year in the NFL, too. <laughs> they keep going in the NFL, they're not going to be tackling anymore. <laughs> not can't, be can't hit the quarterback. <laughs> Good start. Very aggressive start for Shelby Cannon. You see Kiriposian going to the southwest stance now. Cannon throwing those big, wide hooks Stop. and then closing the gap. Stop. Yeah, that's, 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 that's what Cannon probably wants to do a lot of her work here. Yeah. Kirikosian smothering her there from the outside. Flip, flip, stop, 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 stop. Flip, flip, flip. Come on, ladies. Come and on. a slip. Clean, yeah, she is, she's flip. ultra aggressive, and she, she doesn't want to stand and trade, you know, punches with someone with the boxing background of Kirikosian. Cannon is just a, a hungry fighter who believes in herself and believes she can win and leave with the belt. And there's that inside work, and that's what Cannon wants to do with that punch yep. right there. That's the work she wants to get in. And, that, and, and for Kira Kozian, with her hand speed on the outside and combination punching, probably wants to be on that outside, but well, she's up for a fight, too. Shelby Cannon throwing and landing here in round one. Kira Kozian with some shots to the body as we approach the end of the first. Round number two, Kirikosian comes out southpaw. She is in the red and gold, Cannon in the black and pink. Seems like Cannon's a little bit physically stronger than Kirikosian, yes. so it, it, her, her best bet is to 
try to Red keep Lee, this Red bully Lee. tactics going. Kirikozzi is going to have to figure out a tactical way to keep this fight on the outside. As you can see, her nose is bloody from that inside tie plum uppercut combination that uh, Cannon used at the end of the last round. Cannon said before her fight in Denver against Cecilia Ulloa that it would teach her if she really was a bare knuckle boxer. And coming through that night, what she meant was, could she take the heat? How would she react? And we saw it. She did perfectly. And now she's come off to a good start yeah. against Kirikosian. Yeah, well, the, the way she takes the heat is she brings her own heat. Correct. Know, that's been yeah. sort of uh, what we've seen from her in her BYB career thus far. A good shot there for Kirikosian. Kind of the right hook. Good, good. And that's the kind of timing shot that Kirikosian wants to get off from the outside. That's the advantage she has on the outside is that speed and timing. And that's what she, why she's got to work on keeping it on the outside. And, of course, why Shelby Cannon wants to bring that fight on the inside where she's had the advantages. And you can see Shelby's knee hit the canvas. Yeah. So it is a knockdown. Yeah, and it was, she ran right into that right yep. hook. And there's a big left hook there from Shelby Cannon now. Kira Kozian working the dirty boxing as well. Oh, good body shot from Agnesa Kirikosian. Yeah, Kirikosian adjusted there to that tight plum. She said, okay, I can't get my head up, so I'll, I'll take what I can get. She threw that combination on the inside, and you know what it did? It made Cannon's hand come off her neck because she wanted to protect the body. We got to fight now. 10 seconds, let's put a bell in. Great start to our title fight. Good adjustment made by Agnesa Kirikosian between the first and second yeah. with the coach AJ Easley. And the 10-8 as well yep. is a key, key point here in a, in a fight that's been very competitive thus far. We're going to see this shot of the knockdown. Good right hook there from Kirikosian as it catches Cannon coming in face first. And that's the thing. you got to be careful not to lean in against a person with their boxing expertise and background of Kirikosian. Good timing shot. Sinisa Superbad Estrada is in the corner of Kirikosian tonight. The Mexican-American number five, pound for pound, undisputed IBF, WBA, WBC, and WBO world minimum champion. There you see Coach AJ Easley as Serge, one of the best cut men in the business, works on Agnesa Kirikosian. Yeah, you see And there you see, yep. You talk about timing shots. Yeah. Sinisa is one of the best in the business. Yeah. Sinisa is super bad. He's super bad, as they call it. That's yep. her nickname. Yeah? That is, yep. But she just won the undisputed title about a week ago. And here, here tonight supporting her friend Agnesa Kirikosian at BYB. Round number three. Shelby Cannon, the southpaw, black and pink, red and gold for Kirikosian, who scored the 10-8 with the knockdown in round number two. Title fight scheduled for six rounds. Oh, good right hand there from Kirikosian. I think Shelby Cannon is going to have to work on getting aggressive and not allowing Kirikosian to have, get so comfortable circling around. She did a good job of it in the first round, where as soon as Kirikosian stopped circling, Cannon attacked and made her uncomfortable. But since then, especially with that knockdown last round, it seems like Kirikosian has gotten back into a groove. It's up to Cannon to readjust back to back to now to, to what Kirikosian is doing. Which is exactly what her coach, AJ Easley, told us pre-fight. He said, Ignesa needs to feel the fight. Yeah. And you can see she started to feel the fight yeah. and how it was going, and yeah. she's adjusted. Yeah, she came out of the first round with a bloody nose. Yeah. Yeah. She definitely felt the fight. <laughs> Cannon now with that tie plum again. This is her advantage. She's got to keep here. No, and you see Kirikosian tying her up, trying to take away that advantage, trying to get that fight back on the outside. She gets a break from referee Christopher Young. Papa Goose, a.k.a. Mongoose, Robert McIntyre, the coach of Shelby Cannon. Round number three of our title matchup. And one thing that's understated here is Kirikosian changes stances. You yes. know, uh, Shelby's a, a pure southpaw, but Kirikosian changing stances gives her a few different angles to work with. And I feel like that's also been a, a, a subtle difference in, the, in her coming back into this fight and taking that and taking the advantage away from, from uh, the early advantage Cannon had. The same timing shot there, catches Cannon on the way in again. This time he doesn't drop her. Kirikosian again using that timing as Cannon trying to stay aggressive, trying to keep her uncomfortable. That's what Cannon has to do. There she catches her, catches Kirikosian with a good hook on the eye. You got to keep Kirikosian uncomfortable and not stay in the rhythm she wants to be in. A good finish to that round by Shelby Cannon. Yep.
Here's a good shot, Paulie. Bam. That was that right, right, straight right down the pipe. And that was a little bit of a change of pace because Kirkosian has usually been using that shot right there, which is a roundhouse right hand. But that change early in the round with that straight shot surprised Cannon. The Cannon came back well at the end of that round as well, uh, landing some good shots of her own. Still got a fight here. Up in anybody's fight, who's going to the fourth? You got that right. It'd be interesting to see that 10-8 that round it makes a big difference. That is a right now that is a that is looming large in a fight where both women have taken the momentum back and forth. And we're at the midway point of a six-round matchup. Title fight. Super bad in the corner of Kirkosian. Coach Goose in the corner of Shelby Cannon, who said, and I will quote Shelby Cannon, that in the fight against Uyoa, he said, drop her like a toilet seat. Yeah. Okay? Yeah, you know, whatever way the message comes, if it works, it works. Sometimes the simple is best. Yep. The kiss theory. And Cannon comes out ultra aggressive and here in the Cannon fourth. has to do right there. You see Kirikosian likes to be in, she likes to be out. But when Cannon tries to get out, I mean, when Kirikosian tries to get out, Cannon chased her down there. And again, trying to use that physical strength. As I said earlier in the fight, it seems like Cannon is the physically stronger of the two. She needs to use that. And Shelby said coming in, she's going to try to use the aggressive nature of Kirikosian against her. Oh, shot cuts. Cuts uh, Cannon's eye. I think she yep. got caught with part of that uppercut that uh, Kirikosian timed her on the way in. And Kirikosian is so smooth switching that stance, Pauly. Yeah. Finding a home for single punches at this point, but doing a lot of damage with them. That one off the shoulder. Yeah, Jake allows her to have a, a bit of a more versatile repertoire. She's able to fight at different angles and find the angles. And Cannon has to work on trying to keep the fight here and also yeah. getting work done here. You see, what, what Kirikosian as the boxer, what she tries to do on the inside is try to negate Cannon's ability to do a lot of the good work on the inside until she gets a break. So it's a little bit tougher for Cannon to maneuver in there, but that's where she wants to be. That clinch work, the dirty boxing, and you take it to the MMA world, that is an exhausting style of fight that Shelby Cannon has showcased early and trying to put into form here in round number four. And you can see the mouth open, deep breaths being taken by oh, Shelby job. Boom Boom Cannon. Good hook there from Karakosian. Cannon is at the point where she has to take one or two shots to get try to get on the inside, and which can take away energy from her, but which by the time she gets on the inside, she's not able to do the work she wants to do. But she has to get that work done on the inside. We've got ourselves a fight. Very first boxing match, professional debut for Shelby Cannon was in London, England, June of last year. And here's the dirty boxing. Agnesa landing once, twice, with those short hooks and then a nice uppercut counter by Boom Boom. Yeah. You see, uh, Kira Cozy, and as she stays more in the fight, she gets the timing. Yes. She kind of starts seeing that's just her boxing experience. You warm into the fight, you start getting the timing of your opponent. And that's why there's got to be some adjustments made on the part of, uh, of um, Cannon. Maybe maybe uh, use some feints on the way in, try to throw off that rhythm, rhythmic timing that Kira Cozy is starting to use to her advantage. That cut is, yeah, I think that was the uppercut, right? Is that the option walked into the uppercut? Early in that early part of the round. Super bad in the corner of Spitfire as our title fight moves to round number five. SNS, super bad at Spitfire. <laughs> you got that right. When you're ready. When you're ready. And play. Susie Kantikian, killer queen from Armenia, one of the great influences of Agnesa Kirikosi and the former two-time flyweight world champion. Held the unified belts from 2007 to 2012, and a WBA title from 2013 to 2017. Uh, one of the trendsetters in boxing from Armenia. Spitfire trying to become the super flyweight champion as we've entered round four. Let's see what pace Cannon is able to keep up. See that footwork. 
has been bothering Kana. She's not really been able to track down Kira Kosin. Because early on in the first round, she tracked down Kira Kosin because Kira Kosin didn't really have the timing set, the, uh, the punching on the timing set off the movement. There's Kana now getting on the inside. But as Kira Kosin has gotten warmed into the fight, she's able to punch off this movement. So now it, throw, it, it hurts Kana's ability even more to close that gap. But she desperately needs to close the gap as the rounds wear on. Agnesa has made some good adjustments. Had the knockdown in round number two. The women leaving it all in the trigon. You know, what Kirikosian does on the inside. She just tries to negate the ability from, of Cannon to work. It's yes. Like, you can negate it enough, you'll get a break from the referee. And Cannon wants to free herself and keep working so that the referee doesn't break them here. But you see it, it physically exhausts, like you said, Goldie, a couple of rounds ago. It's a, it's a tough way to fight. It's a good way to finish early. But as it goes on, it does wear down on both fighters, but Shelby, the aggressor as well. And of course, MMA fighters don't have the advantage of taking it to the ground. So yes. you only, you, all you have is really the inside dirty boxing, which boxers have an easier time negating from just holding. And again, Cannon trying to end the round with a flurry here. To the end of the last one, leaving an impression in the judges' minds. The corner of Shelby Camp. AJ Easley already has one BYB champion in his camp in Los Angeles. BYB lightweight champion Julio Tenori Rodriguez. Two minutes remain in this title fight. Will there be a second on AJ Easley's team who takes BYB gold? I think Kira Kozian right now will be a best be served to just use her jab and keep this uh, controlled as you have a tired Shelby Cannon, so the jab becomes even more effective. Sixth and final round, Magic Man. Yep. Kind of like uh, Giuliani used that jab to his, yeah. uh, to his advantage a couple of fights ago. I feel like Kirikosian, with her boxing background, could use that same kind of jab because Cannon is tired. And so she, it will be very difficult for her to, to, to get on the inside. And also, Cannon doesn't use her own jab, just like uh, Crowder wasn't using his jab last that, that fight. Good hook there from Cannon on that. She gets in there. But combination punching by Kirikosian, and that's also making a difference. Good work in the clinch. Christopher Young keeping an eye on things. 105 on the clock. Sixth and final round. Oh, shot there. But again, combination punching with Kirikosi. And that's the difference, again, her ability to throw in combination. And now she's been fighting this tight plumb off with the body shots. And that's how she frees herself from it as, as it forces Cannon to take her hands off Kirikosi's neck and protect her own body. Because round one, Shelby Cannon, she did come out like she was shot out of a cannon. But as the time has gone down, the pace has slowed because it's such an exhausting style of fight for Shelby. And Agnesa has been able to do some damage of her own here in this clinch. And you know what? She's, she's a spitfire. Yeah. yeah. She's putting the punches together, two handy combinations. Both of them will be honored by Scott Burt and those at the Bare Knuckle Boxing Hall of Fame in Belfast, New York this summer. Could have another fight of the night for Kira Kozian. The title, the final seconds, will it be Kira Kozian or Cannon? They go the distance.
except for our co-main event of the evening, the heavyweight title eliminator matchup between Gustavo Trujillo and Levi Costa, my partner, the magic man, Pauli Molinaggi, and of course, Yuli the Monster Diaz. You've got yourself a little title eliminator in the cruiserweight division coming up in Denver against Zion Tomlinson. How's your preparation? Man, preparation is at, uh, at a thousand percent. Uh, it's going very well. Camp is amazing. Um, I got a couple new coaches in my corner, and uh, I can't wait to, you know, show the world what I what I got. I will say when I first met you through Paulie, and you're going to stay with us, Yuli. I said, is he really that good of a guy? Paulie said yes, and you've proven that. So thank, thank you. you. Thank you. I appreciate that, Paulie. Thank you, man. <laughs> <laughs> Paulie gave you the ring. Your reputation precedes you. It's great to get a call sign from Paulie Malinazzi. You got that right. I'm still waiting for mine. <laughs> Here's Big Mo. Ladies and gentlemen, back here in Tampa, Florida, it is now time for our co-main event of the evening. Five three-minute rounds, and it is the eliminator for the BYB Heavyweight Championship of the World. Introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner, please welcome the Trigon, Levi Costa. As long as you are. I suppose the question is, what happens when a pit bull faces a Cuban assassin? Levi Costa, 38 years old, Rio de Janeiro, Brazil is home. He's been on the West Coast for two years. I know you know Trujillo very well, Yuli, but Levi Costa has looked good in the Trigon as well. Yeah, I've seen a couple of his fights. I've seen a couple of his highlights, and uh, he's definitely a tough guy. I've seen him hit the canvas, pop right back up, and win a fight. So, yeah, he, he, he brings it. He brings it. This is why this matchup is so special. And the man who is going to be watching very closely, of course, Paulie, is Hurricane Ike Villanueva, our heavyweight champion. Costa wants to come in and utilize what is a bit of a reach advantage, but the Cuban assassin has been finishing everyone quickly. Costa, a two-time Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu world champion. Four stripes on his black belt in Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, a black belt in kickboxing, so we could see some clinch work from him. Absolutely, might be a part of that type lump. He almost broke the canvas with that hard step yeah, in there. Exactly. We need the Trigon for a couple of fights more tonight. Another Brazilian with the nickname Pitbull, Levi Costa. And his opponent fighting out of the red corner. Here's Gustavo Trujillo. Four bare knuckle wins in a total time of three minutes and 51 seconds. His longest fight, one minute and 41 seconds. Making his debut in the Trigon, trains in Miami, trains with King Kong Ortiz. Monster, I know you know Gustavo very well. Tell us about him and what we can expect to see. Man, uh, when you I, you can definitely expect to see some fireworks in the ring tonight. Uh, Gustavo comes in and uh, he's one of the hardest hitters I've ever seen. You know, I have seen a train he puts in a lot of hard work in the gym and uh, as you said earlier his fights don't last too long at all and I, I know about short fights and uh, he, he's, uh, he's right behind me in those yes he is indeed he has been impressive and Paulie 6 and 0 with the gloves on with five knockouts yeah yeah you know he, when, when you saw him shadow boxing earlier you can see he's got a little bit of that boxing pedigree as well it's not just uh, you know the, the MMA and the grappling stuff this guy has a smoothness in the way he moves his hands even the way I was watching him shadow box I said this guy this guy has been around some of the Cuban boxers. This is not just a guy who was a tough guy and, and has a, 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 a world championship level grappling ability. He also has a, some smoothness with his boxing. So we have the decorated jiu-jitsu practitioner and Trujillo decorated in Greco-Roman wrestling should be an exciting heavyweight title eliminator. Here is Big Mo. Ladies and gentlemen for BYB 25 
for the BYB Heavyweight Championship of the World. This battle is brought to you by the Galloway Group and our referee in charge when the bell rings, Wayne Spinola. Let's meet the fighters. First, fighting out of the blue corner. Wearing the white trunks with black trim, he stands six feet, one inch tall. He weighed in at 244.7 pounds. He holds a bare knuckle record of two victories versus just one defeat. And he fights out of San Diego, California, by way of Tessopolis, Rio de Janeiro, Brazil. Ladies and gentlemen, Levi Pitbull Costa. And his opponent fighting out of the red corner. Wearing a black trunks with maroon trim, he stands six feet, four inches tall. He weighed in at 241.2 pounds. He holds an undefeated bare knuckle record of four victories versus no defeats. And he fights out of Miami, Florida. Ladies and gentlemen, here's the Cuban assassin, Gustavo Trujillo. Our tale of the tape for this heavyweight title eliminator, 31-year-old Trujillo against 38-year-old Costa. Gustavo has a significant reach and height advantage. The weight pretty even in this heavyweight clash. Wayne Spinola, our referee. Ready? Big boys, here we go. Here we go. Southpaw Levi Costa in the white trunks, burgundy and black for the Cuban assassin, Gustavo Trujillo. His family is from Nigeria, a Cuban of Nigerian descent. And he, and he told us in the fighter meeting, Julie said, us Nigerians, we just hit hard. We have power. It's just born into us. Hey, I got to agree with him. You know, <laughs> some Nigerians in a fight game that, that are you know, hard haters. Yeah, I mean, a lot of Nigerians do have a big yeah. punching reputation. There's some countries that have big punches, and Nigerians actually have a lot of big punches. Colombia and Venezuela have that too, actually. You got that right. Israel Adesanya. One of the examples, Costa, has looked good, though. He has oh, one fight there in the Trigon, and he was victorious against Josh Burns. You see the way the way the smoothness in which the, the offense comes out from Trujillo. You can, again, that, going back to that, you can see he's been around some of the some of the good boxers. Because like, guy, guy, a lot of guys can throw hard, but he throws hard and smooth. So you don't really see when it's coming, when the, when the shot is coming. There's no hitch there. There's no tell. Trained in Miami with King Kong Ortiz, who just beat Francisco Cordero. Oh, what a shame. Oh, a smooth oh, cue right over by the Cuban assassin. Looks like it's over. That yeah. is incredible. That is impressive stoppage. Costa is not an easy He has game. done it again. Another first round <laughs> stoppage. Scored by Gustavo Trajillo. Hey, Nigerians hit hard, brother. Yeah. <laughs> yes, but then indeed. it's even worse when, you, again, you get the smoothness of the way the punches come out. You know, it, it's it's so smooth right off his rhythm, so you can't really get a timing on when it's coming. You see, he has such a relaxed rhythm, and then all of a sudden, it's, it's like pulling a trigger. Wah, wah. That one, too, was smooth, man. It really was. It really was. You're gonna, once, we, once we get the replay, we're going to see after the break. But I think he comes over the top with his initial jab, so he lowers his lead hand and then comes with right hand afterwards. Another finish for Trujillo. He will fight Ike Villanueva. We'll be back in a moment. With the Magic Man and the Monster, our heavyweight title eliminator. And in break, Paulie, you and Yuli. And Yuli, you had said to Paulie, that first punch that Gustavo landed did damage. And then not much else had to happen for him to finish it. No, and it was a beautiful finish at the end. It was a, you know, a, a, a one-two right down the pipe. And, and, you know, fight was over. You know, and you could tell the, the power that was there. And you look at the, look at the initial throwaway left hand there when he comes around. You see how he does. He throws it around the, the lead hand of of Costa, so that Costa's oh, no. eyes kind of go that oh, no. way towards 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 the right, and then the the, the right hand of, of Trujillo comes from the other side. It's smoothly like a bullet. I mean, it was well set up, well set up, and a, and a perfect throwaway punch to it to initiate it. With huge respect to the Brazilian, of course, 
Yuli, you saw this coming from Trujillo. We thank you for joining us tonight. We will see you in May against Zion Tomlinson. Let's get the official decision from Big Mo. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, referee Wayne Spinola calls a stop to this contest at 1 minute 33 seconds of the very first round. Declaring your winner by knockout, Gustavo Cuban Assassin, Guido. Gustavo. I'm joined here by Miss Claudia Trejo to do a little bit of translating for us. My goodness, that right hand is scary. I'm going to just ask you an easy one to start. How do you feel? Esa mano derecha fue impresionante, da miedo. ¿Cómo te sientes? Eh, me siento bastante bien por la oportunidad de, que me dio BYB por estar aquí. Y nada, agradecido. Y vine a cumplir lo, de, lo que prometí. Ganar mi pelea y listo, estamos aquí. I'm very happy for this opportunity. I did what I had to do. I did what I promised. And I'm just very glad I could tell, do what everybody expected me to do. Now I'm going to cut right to the chase, Gustavo. You came here to make a statement. And in this heavyweight division, there is one champion at the very top, Ike Villanueva. Do you have your eyes on that heavyweight championship? Tú llegaste aquí a dejar tu marca, y solo hay un campeón en este momento que se llama Ike Villanueva. ¿Estás listo para tomar ese reto? Eh, nada, lo que tengo que decirle al campeón actual es que se prepare bien porque vamos a, vamos a pelear y yo no vengo a jugar. Yo soy el Cuban Assassin, vengo a hacer mi trabajo. Matar a la gente aquí. Así que nada, eso es lo único que tengo que decir. Vamos a pelear pronto. All I have to say to the actual champion right now is I'm here to work. I'm not called the Cuban assassin for nothing. I'm here not just to fight. I'm not here to play. I'm here to rip heads off and kill people. Well, we have a heavyweight championship incoming. Ladies and gentlemen, one more time for your winner. Oh, yeah. for the heavyweight championship inside the Trigon. Coming up next, it is our main event of the evening. Cub Hawkins already has a beautiful police gazette diamond belt. He wants to walk away with the light heavyweight belt here in BYB. He will face off against Ryan Jett. The slap heard around the world yesterday at the official weigh-ins. They will fight. They will settle the score. And one will leave with the belt. Coming up next. Introducing first to the scales. He fights out of Charlotte, North Carolina. And he has become one of the bad boys of bare knuckle. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Ryan Jett. I'm really good at like instigating. I already plan on doing a little like the little things to uh, you know irritate things like that just to get him sparked up because I don't fight with the emotion. I'm very calm. That motherfucker scared as hell right now. He don't want to fight me. That's why he's been talking shit about me, trying to discredit me. And then, but he hates my guts at the same time. If I don't like you, I gotta. I want to show you. You know what I'm saying? For the Savage, 174.6 pounds. Step up. Hey, oh, man. One bare knuckle. Chill, chill, chill. You good, you good, you good. You good, you good, you good. You good. Come, no, come, I, come, I can't let that slide. I can't let that slide. Listen, listen, Don't blow your chance. Yeah. Don't blow your chance. Don't blow it. Don't blow it. Don't blow it. Now, 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 what's the gun? Say no more. We don't deal with that. We don't deal with that. We don't deal with that. Hi. Yeah. Over. We'll do that. I ain't lying to you. So you said you're the calm guy. He's the one who gets uh, a little bit overwhelmed and exuberant. What just happened there, bud? I ain't with all that talking. Yeah. yeah. No more yeah, talking. We'll see. Yeah. We'll see. Play. You'll do nothing. Yeah. You're here because yeah. of me. Play. So yeah. thank yeah. me. Get on your Play. knees and thank Play. me. Yeah. Bitch. Go see what he needs tomorrow, bitch. Yeah, we'll yeah. see. Pussy. Thank me. Yeah. Know that. Know that. Right, I gave you the chance. You know what, man. Yeah, we'll see. Yeah, you got Okay. You, got you know what's up with me. All right. You know what's up with me. He fake as hell. I don't talk shit to people that I don't want to fight. Like if you ask me how is this fight gonna go, I'm gonna say I'm gonna clip him early. I think when he comes in super hard, super heavy, yeah. I'm not gonna be there where he thinks I'm gonna be. But when he when he feels comfortable and he, he comes at me, I'm not gonna be there. You know, I'm gonna be in my own my own space, and that's where he, I think he's gonna learn. Uh, 
that I'm the real deal. Cub Hawkins is the savage. He is four and oh. His opponent is Ryan Jett. This fight scheduled for six three-minute rounds for the BYB Light Heavyweight World Championship. The fight is set to continue. Ladies and gentlemen, the wait is over. This, this is, is your main event of the evening. Six three-minute rounds for the BYB Light Heavyweight Championship of the World. Brought to you by Mike Browner Law. Introducing first, fighting out of the red corner. Please welcome the Trigon, Ryan Jett. I gotta feed the streets, I'm gonna bleed the streets, ski mask on my face, sometimes you gotta cheat, just stay ahead in this, drink surf like it's liquor, street life I have you catching up the God quick off, stick off, to your lip off, let the bang on you like a blood or a rip off, flip off, so much bread, I'm a gymnast, please. Ryan Jett, born and raised in Charlotte, North Carolina. Father of two, Ryan is four, rage, 10 months. Coming off a victory in London back at BYB 18. Ryan Jett, obviously you saw what happened at the weigh-ins. He wants to make a statement tonight. He told us in the fighter meetings, Paulie, he's trying to be the nice guy. I'm not sure the fighter meetings and the weigh-ins were virtually somewhere, identical. Somewhere between the fighter meeting and the weigh-ins, uh, there was uh, maybe a change of his mind. Yes, indeed. He did have the emotional no contest against Angel Hernandez. Originally, it was a disqualification for Ryan Jett. He has said, though, I'm going to take care of business, I'm going to take down the Savage, and I'm going to take home the belt. Ryan Jett. Spoiler alert. This guy. And you know them. Sticky. My finger itchy. Like and his opponent fighting out of the red corner. Please welcome Cub Hawkins. unbeaten inside the Trigon with a record of 4-0 and oh, coming off a spectacular performance against Daniel Laurel back at BYB 23 in January that earned Cub Hawkins the 185 pound Police Gazette Diamond Belt. Now he wants to move to 5-0 and oh and take home a BYB championship belt. He told us he knows Ryan comes in very fast, super heavy, may go from a distance with footwork, or we may see Cub Hawkins go back to the sport he started at age four, and that's wrestling. Well, you know what, the thing is, Hawkins is one of those guys, Savage really, really describes him because he's one of those soft-spoken, calm guys outside the, the Trigon. You see him, and he's coming off like such a nice guy, but there's an inner Savage, and, and then having gotten to know him some things in his life that have, have uh, uh, you know, in, in, in some of the, in, the interviews we've done with him, he's really, really kicking on how to turn the page over. He was, he was told by a coach years ago, you gotta have a little prick in you, and he does have Savage. Here's Big Mo. Ladies and gentlemen, this is your main event of the evening for BYB 25, the brawl on the bay. Scheduled for six three-minute rounds. It is for the BYB Light Heavyweight Championship of the World. So, Tampa, Florida, I need you all. Trucks, 
with silver and gold trim. He stands five feet, nine inches tall. He weighed in at 174.3 pounds. He holds a bare knuckle record of three wins versus just one defeat and one no contest. And he fights out of Charlotte, North Carolina. Ladies and gentlemen, Ryan Jett. And his opponent, fighting out of the red corner, wearing the black trunks with white and red trim. He stands five feet, eight inches tall. He weighed in at 174.6 pounds. He holds a perfect, undefeated, bare knuckle record of four victories versus no defeats. And he fights out of Madison, Wisconsin, by way of Chicago, Illinois, introducing the current reigning Police Gazette Diamond, 185 pound champion, ladies and gentlemen, Cub the Savage Hawkins. Our referee in charge of this championship main event, Wayne Spinola. Come here, Cub. All right, gentlemen, relax. We're not starting yet. You guys know the rules. Obey my commands at all times. Protect yourselves at all times. If you want to now, shake hands. All right, guys, step back. I'll get you talking to me. Right over there, I'll hold up. Don't worry. Queen did offer the opportunity yeah. to shake hands. I had a feeling they weren't going to take nah, it. No, no, no. And Jet has not ha taken his eyes off of Hawkins since he got into the Trigon. I mean, the entire introductions, Jet didn't even react when they announced his own name. Watch Hawkins get introduced and, 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 and jump up and down. And just has had his eyes on him the whole time. And here we go. Cub Hawkins in the black trunks. Black and yellow for Charlotte, North Carolina's Ryan Jett. Goalie, that's your one. Right? It is, but you know. <laughs> just a little, just a little the bell, more enthusiasm. The bell rang on me while I was yeah. talking. No? <laughs> here we go. Jab with the jabber can, hook with the hooker. I'll, yeah, I'll use one yeah, of your lines, Paul. 1-1. Yeah, <laughs> one, one. Definitely goalie. The, the bell rang on me while I was trying to describe <laughs> it. Here we go. Switch of a stance shown by Cub Hawkins. Stop, 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 stop. Don't push off. Closing the distance is Ryan Jett. Yeah, he closed that distance real fast. but And that's what Cub talked about. He's expecting that. So will Cub utilize his wrestling, or will he utilize some footwork and length? Time will tell. Hawkins throws big power. Yeah, both guys, both guys really letting it go. Good defensive maneuvers from both guys so far. Break clean, back up. Ryan Jed, two-time fight of the night cool. winner. Thank you. Cub fight. Hawkins, four and zero oh, inside the Trigon. Stop. Round clean, one, back back title up. fight scheduled for six. Fight. A lot of posturing, trying to yeah set that set that big shot up. But both guys have big power. Good shots here landed from Hawkins. Jet just kind of brings the chin up and says, all right, that didn't hurt me. Yeah, he caught, Bring him, it. With, caught him with the uppercut. I think Jeb ducked into one. Jet in the corner. Hawkins trying to keep him there. Ryan Jet looking to connect as well. Jet's good defensive instincts as well, though. Jet's got his head moving when he was stuck in that corner. Didn't take anything too clean. And fast hands. On display again by Ryan Jett and a nice jab to open that one up. Yeah, counter right hand there from Hawkins on the inside, though. Yeah, both guys have a good sense of timing, so it's oh! a good hook there. Yep, mouthpiece out. Flurry by Cub Hawkins. And Jared goes to hold on there. I was just going to say, both guys have a good sense of timing, so a little bit of hesitation and leading for both guys that they're both very good natural counter punches and very athletic as well. Yeah, here we go. Ready? That was a mouthpiece. Smile on the face Jet, of Hawkins. Jet has, expression from Jet. Jet has the same expression on his face as the, when the fight started, or even before the fight. Right. <laughs> Doesn't matter if the fight's actually going on, he still has the same look on his face. Talk about poker face. Hawkins has landed some power this round. And finishes. Stop, stop, 
in the clinch. One in the books in our title fight. Boom, that was a big hook there from Hawkins. This jet ducked into it. I thought it was an uppercut when he ducked into it, but it was a left hook indeed. Ryan Jet unfazed as we get set for round number two. The winner will take home the BYB Light Heavyweight World Championship belt. You see, Cole Hawkins at the end of round one was feeling good about himself. We're back to his corner with a smile on his face. Feels like he struck first with that hook that we showed you on the replay. Round two main event. Thank you. Ready? Cub in the black trunks, black and yellow for Ryan Jett. Southpaw stance for Cub Hawkins. Hawkins in that southpaw stance now, man. Yep. Watch your fingers, guys. Again, you see neither guy really jumps off the gun. Oh, good right hand there from and Cub acknowledged it. You see, they both go from zero to 100. Because they're both yeah. natural counterpunchers. As soon as one goes, the other one's trying to time him. Great advantage. flurry by Ryan Jett. Oh, oh, and a big punch lands for Jett. I think Jett threw the shorter shot there, because yeah. Hawkins, I think, also was throwing at the same time. Now Ryan Jett in the southpaw stance, looking to utilize a long jab. Cub switches back to southpaw. And, and Jet goes into the southpaw stance himself, Goldie. Yep. Well, for a second, anyway. <laughs> back to the right hand stance. Again, here's that waiting. Again, he tends to go from 0 to 100 here. Now both guys in the right hand stance. That waiting is the mutual respect of the power and the speed that both men possess. See here, they, I think I feel like he, both guys should be dropping his feints there. Oh, good shot there from Jet off of the initial drop step feint. That's what I was gonna say. When when you got two counter punches in there, a lot of times you gotta try to get an initial move. You see a little bit of a warning here at the push. I told you, and I told him, no push it off. Yes, you did. You see that? Yeah, you did. Okay. Don't do it again because he's gonna retaliate. I'm gonna warn him not to do it. No more. Wayne Spinola said, don't do it again, you are warned. Yeah, warning for both guys. Yeah. I feel like here, when they're both going to come out now, they're going to both go out and come out and probably get into a posture. The, the better feint here may draw a false move that one guy can take advantage of. But both guys have a counter-punching instinct, so the feinting is what generates the counter-punching opportunity. See, there's an attempt to at feint yep. there by Hawkins. Oh, good right hand there from Hawkins. Man, Jet walked right into that one. Cub was looking to set up the uppercut. Good footwork in avoidance by Ryan Jet. Both men with a ton of athleticism, and again, a straight punch yeah. sends Hawkins to the ropes. Strong jab. Yep, from Jet. It's the second one this round, Paul. Yep. Light heavyweight belt on the line. Jet is oozing blood, though. Oh, 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 oh. Jet, that one, that one, that that one changed the facial expression of Jet. Yes. Jet stopped that one. Now Jet is going back. We have not seen a facial expression from Jet change. Jet, Jet writhed in pain after that one. Yep. And he's back on the corner now. And now Cub Hawkins looking to finish it right here, right now. Jet has a good head movement in the corner a lot of times. Trying, trying to survive, it. staying in it. Ryan Jett and Sam Liera was a fight that was, like, Ryan Jett was a mess, but it went to distance. And this round comes to conclusion. And Hawkins stared him down and smiled. That punch busted and open. See here, that was a good, sharp right hand from Jett early on. And, and, and Hawkins actually acknowledged it with a good smile. That was a 
Left hand from Jet as well. That was where the shorter shot was thrown by Jet. Strong jab there by Jet as well as they both exchanged jabs. Looked like Jet was going to take advantage of some yeah. things there. And then at the end of that round, some real damage done by Hawkins. Cut over the right eye of Brian Jett being attended to. Yeah, and there was something that Hawkins landed in the last 20 seconds. You could actually see the facial expression of Jett change in, a, in a, an expression of pain. He felt something. And, that, and again, Jett had not changed his facial expression since the introductions. You see the mouse under the right eye of Ryan Jett. Our title fight continues. Round number three. Yeah, and that's where he got hit. You start to wonder if there could be orbital fractures or whatnot. With the expression, I thought maybe he had busted his nose, but with that swelling, I agree with you, Pauly. Cobb very intelligent right now, not rushing in where Ryan Jett can get one away and oh, change the beat of this fight. Uppercut just glazed by Cub Hawkins. Jet still has that winning mentality. He's not trying to, he's still nope. trying to throw hurtful punches, but Hawkins has those razor sharp eyes trying to set those traps. As Jet is spitting out blood as he's trying to breathe. I mean, that fight of the night back at BYB 9 here in Tampa, Sam Liera, Ryan Jet. Jet showed his durability and then some, and he's doing so again here in round number three. Title fight continues. Ryan Jett now puts Cub Hawkins in the corner. Yeah, both guys have good defense when they get trapped on the yes. on the trigon corner. Good, oh, good exchange there from both guys. And the athleticism of both men is on display as well. Yep. The explosiveness, the power, the strength, and the break by Wayne Spinola. Midway point around three. Jett is trying his best to keep Hawkins in that corner. Don't hold him, don't hold him. Ducked under by Ryan Jett. One minute on the clock, round three. Bloody bruise, far from beaten Ryan Jett. Cub Hawkins. Again, he's that po posing. We're looking for feints here. Yep. We're looking for feints here. Neither guys. It looks you saw some small faint attempts from Jett, but this is where both guys are looking for the other guy to make the first move, but you got to draw it out with some feints. Jett attempts another one there. Hawkins, quick hook. And again, powers forward. Nasty uppercut. But again, you see Jet's defense when he's stuck is also yep. not taking any clean shots. The shots are landing at times. There's a, some grazing shots, but both guys have a good defense and they do get, get stuck up, get up against the corners. That, that, Jet's complaining about headbutts. He's, Cup comes in with his head, but a lot of blood on the, on the face of Jet. And I am wondering if there is an orbital fracture yeah. under that right eye of, of Jet. And blood coming out of the nose of Cub Hawkins as well. Wayne Spinola makes sure nothing happens after the bell. She replays here. See some of these shots landing, but you see a lot of that is just grazing. Again, that was a partially landed right hand there by Jet. I mean, by uh, by Hawkins. And then his momentum takes Jet into the corner. Our main event of the evening. Cub Hawkins, Ryan Jet. I'm let the doctor check out Jet. Jet's already complaining. He wants to keep fighting. But you, you got to keep an eye on that eye. There, she's trying to see if you can see her fingers. 
And there's a lot, not only a lot of swelling, but the, the threat of an orbital fracture is there with that kind of swelling. Brian Jett was a mess after Sam Liera. He's busted up, but far from beaten here. As we reach round number four, black trunks for Cub Hawkins, black and yellow for Ryan Jett. Quick hands against the ropes thrown by both men. And blood just pouring out of the nose of Jett as well. Yeah, but he's still going. He's still, yeah, he still has that winning mentality as both guys are battling. As much of the back and forth that we saw in the, the bad blood, quote, unquote, both these men are savages, plain and yeah, simple. Absolutely. And, you know, this was one we were really looking forward to, yeah. this fight. You know, we, we knew this fight would have, was going to be a good one, which is why it's our main event. Sharp right hand there from Jet. Hawkins, though, keeps that positioning. A sharp, strong jab on the inside from Hawkins as he closed the gap. And keep in mind that 4 and 0, Cub Hawkins had never worked out of the first round. Yeah. And now we're in the fourth. Nobody survived round one before tonight against Cub Hawkins. I'll tell you what, he's low. He's, he may not have gotten the first round stoppage, but he's still pushing for that stoppage. As Jed is more, more and more damaged goods, but you're not going to mentally take Jed out of the fight. You may physically take him out of the fight, but he's still going to be looking for hurtful shots. Sharp right hand there from Jed. Hawkins undaunted, though, man. He yeah. is so calculated in his attack. And got a very high Trigon IQ. Those ropes are splattered with blood. <laughs> Look at the ropes behind Hawkins. Yeah, they are splattered with blood. Sharp hook from Ryan Jett. Glances off the shoulder of Cub Hawkins. 60 seconds on the clock now here in round four. Big shots from Hawkins. Dirty boxing. I can't even tell it. Oh, sharp, strong right hand to Jed from, from Hawkins. And he, again, he's got Jed hurt a little bit. In eighth grade, a high school coach told Cub Hawkins he was mentally weak. That was the last day I think Cub Hawkins was mentally weak. Oh. Trying to finish it right here. Right I feel now. like Hawkins battles these kind of demons every single time he's in there. And yeah. it's that rage, and you can see that inner rage and savagery that comes out. And here it is right now. He is trying to overwhelm a very tough Ryan Jet. Jet being smart with the head movement. And Wayne Spinola was right there. Ryan Jett, when he got to the corner, yeah. I don't know if Jett has enough to go these next two rounds. I don't, the mind is willing, but I don't know if the body can really go. And again, I don't know if he's got a fracture in his face. The whole guy is pretty much. What, there's been a shot. penalty. There's been consequences for going this many rounds with Cub Hawkins. I mean, right. we, we say Cub Hawkins get, has gotten consecutive first round stoppages. Well, this is why when you go rounds with Hawkins, the amount of damage he's able to do. It's crazy. And, and the doctor's going to have a look at Jet again. And Jet's going to argue to fight again because Jet is himself a crazy guy. Right. But I don't know if he can see at this point. I really don't know. I, I, I don't know if he can see. Well, he's arguing. This is why you need doctors, though, because fighters, there are fighters that are too brave for their own good. I am not sure Ryan Jester can continue fighting. I know he thinks it. Yeah. I am not sure, man. Well, like you said, Paulie, he's not going to stop unless it stops. It. And it point. is all over. Cub Hawkins is the BYB light heavyweight world champion. He gets the stoppage of Ryan Jett, and he will go home.
home with the belt. The Savage reigns supreme. We will break it all down, make it official here in Tampa, coming up next. Ladies and gentlemen, referee Wayne Spinola calls a stop to this contest at the start of the fifth round, declaring your winner by a doctor stoppage. And the new BYB Light Heavyweight Champion of the World comes the Savage Hawkins. All right, come on, Hawkins. I'm going to make this short and sweet. You now have another belt that you want inside the Trigon. What do you got to say to your friends, your family, to everybody watching tonight? Uh, God is great, man. And uh, Tampa, thank you guys. You guys made me feel like I was home, and I really appreciate that. Thank you for coming out. Well, thank you for closing out an amazing night. Come to Savage Hawkins, your new BYB light heavyweight champ. And uh, I just want to say, like, I don't care if it's tomorrow, 30 years. I hope everyone gets to feel this feeling of hard work paying off and dreams coming through. Thank you, guys. Ladies and gentlemen, your champion, Cub Hawkins. Cub Hawkins, the champion. He is the victor, and he is also a participant in tonight's fight of the night. We just watched it, Paulie. Cub and Ryan. Yeah, now it's, it's nice when you win, but it's also even better when you win in the fight of the night. Uh, and it makes you let you know you entertained, you gave the fans their money's worth, and uh, you earned your victory, because both of these guys fought very, very hard, and it's the reason it is the fight of the night. Ryan Jett took Hawkins deep, but Hawkins took Ryan Jett out. Our knockout of the night is brought to you by Mike Brander Law. And it is the Cuban assassin. Oh, I mean, could there be any doubt? One punch sharpness. What a stoppage. What a knockout against a guy who's very, very durable. Costa yes. no, was not a guy you expected to go out that fast. But Trujillo lives up to his reputation. So the night concludes in Tampa with Cub Hawkins and Yadnessa Kirakosian leaving as BYB World Champions. Of course, our next stop is Denver when Smash will meet the Samurai as newly crowned super middleweight champion LT Smash Nelson fights Tommy Turner for the BYB middleweight belt in Yuli Diaz and Zion Tomlinson will meet in a cruiserweight title eliminator matchup. Jacob Pavillis looked great in her debut. Lucas Jones earns a knockout in his backyard. Harry Jigliotti by unanimous decision. Martin Brown knocked him down. Kira Kozian's the champ. Trujillo with the knockout. Hawkins with the belt. We will see you Friday, May 10th, a mile high. From my powerful partner, the two-time world champion, the magic man, Pauli Malinaji, Mike Goldberg saying so long until next time. We see you right back here, inside the Trigon. <laughs>